Despite all the intricacies surrounding the winemaking process, it's essentially just fermented grape juice, and the basic winemaking process is really a pretty simple one. First, the grapes are harvested from the vineyard. The time of harvest varies depending on the region, the variety of grapes being grown, and the style of wine being produced. However, harvest usually occurs between August and October in the Northern Hemisphere, and between February and April in the Southern Hemisphere. Harvest season is often referred to as the crush. The winemaker determines the optimal time to harvest the vineyard based on the ripeness of the grape, ensuring the desired levels of sugar, acid, and tannin. Unseasonable weather can also impact the time of harvest. Threats such as excessive heat or frost may force a harvest earlier than would otherwise be desired, leaving the grapes less time to mature on the vine. Traditionally, grapes were harvested by hand, and some wineries continue to observe this practice today. The main advantage to hand picking is that it allows for selection of only the best grapes. Grapes that are unhealthy can be discarded, and grapes that are not yet ripe can be left on the vine to mature longer. However, mechanical harvesters were introduced in the 1960s, and they're utilized by most modern vineyards. These machines are considerably more efficient, harvesting up to 200 tons of grapes per day versus the one ton that a human picker could harvest. After the grapes are harvested, the first step is crushing them. The grapes are put into a mechanical crusher, which gently squeezes the grapes to break the skins and release the juice. The resulting mixture is called the must. Some very small wineries may still crush grapes by trampling them barefoot or using a small hand-wielded crusher. But nearly all large-scale wineries have moved to mechanical methods, and the old-fashioned grape stomp is now mostly reserved for entertainment value at wine festivals. Next comes the fermentation. Fermentation occurs when yeast comes into contact with the grape juices and slowly converts the grape sugar into alcohol. Yeast exists naturally on the grapes, so simply leaving the must to sit undisturbed would likely result in some degree of natural fermentation. However, most modern winemakers utilize cultured yeasts as well in order to give them more direct control over the fermentation process. Fermentation can take anywhere from a few days to a few months. When this process is complete, you have wine. The wines are typically allowed to then rest for a time period before drinking. That's known as maturing or finishing the wines. Of course, this is an extremely simplified explanation of the winemaking process, and winemakers employ many different techniques to achieve the wine they desire. For example, some wines are barrel fermented, which simply means they are allowed to ferment inside oak barrels, while others are fermented in stainless steel tanks. Oak barrels will add an oaky flavor to the wine as well as impact the texture and color. Stainless steel, on the other hand, is considered neutral and will not add anything beyond what the grapes already bring to the table. You may also hear of wines that are barrel aged. These wines are typically fermented in stainless steel tanks and then allowed to mature in oak barrels. The flavor and character of the final wine can be influenced by so many things, including the specific type and age of oak barrels used, the temperature of the wine during fermentation, and how long the wine is allowed to mature. Depending on the winemaker's preferences, the total winemaking process can take anywhere from a few months to a few years.